Welcome everyone and thank you for joining us today from different parts of the world, from London, from San Francisco, Buenos Aires, Rosario and Paraguay, and maybe some other places as well. So thank you all for being here. We are looking forward to hearing our speakers talk about how science-based startups are leading the way to a new paradigm. Microphones will be uh, muted during the presentations uh, and we ask you that if you have any questions to, for the speakers, to um, put them in the, in, in the, in the chat. Um, and then the, the questions will be picked up by, by the speakers to answer them. Those who, um, the session will be recorded and we will share it on our website and the social networks. We will also share the contact details of the speakers at the end of the session. As some of you know, the Embassy of Argentina is keen is a keen supporter of tech startups. Many of you probably know Veronica, who is very active in the embassy in, in dealing with these issues. During the past years, we have helped Argentine entrepreneurs to land and grow in the UK. For that reason, in 2017, we launched Connect Our UK, a network of entrepreneurs, investors, and mentors willing to share knowledge and experiences and to help their peers to succeed. Equally, we're always ready to give a hand to British international startups wishing to invest in Argentina. Normally, we do this by working together with the Department of International Trade team that is based in, in Buenos Aires. I would like to welcome all of you and would like to thank our friends from the Guild of Entrepreneurs and from Tech UK, who have very kindly helped us to promote this event. And now, without further ado, I would like to introduce our great speakers. They are a prime example of how collaboration is the key word for success. They have proven that collaboration, both across disciplines and internationally, is the only way forward. Matias Peire is the founder of Gridix. Gridix is a leading biotech company, builder in Latin America, creating world-class startups, including Bflow, um, Micro, and Casper Biotech. Franco Goitia, is the CEO of Casper Biotech. Casper is an Argentine startup with offices in San Francisco that is taking CRISP diagnosis to the next level. They are at the frontier of powering better and more accessible molecular diagnostic, hence transforming medical care. Rick Cassini is the CEO of Microma. Microma's vision is to change the way the world is colored by introducing novel natural colorants to meet customer demands for better, sustainable, and healthier products. Microma has received investments from IndieBio. Matias, the floor is yours. Okay. I'm okay. Still listen to me. You can see that also. Okay, thanks. Thanks a lot uh, for, for this space. Uh, for for this opportunity, it's very important to us to, as you as you mentioned, uh, Valeria, to go to go international. We are we are we are truly uh, believers uh, of doing this kind of, of projects, collaborating uh, with different profiles of people and also collaborating all around the world. We think that we can be from Latin America supplier to the world of this this great startups based on on, on great science. So we want to, to talk today to present what, what do we do and, and how we do it a little bit. Uh, I want to, to, be, to be sure to, to, to give uh, the word then to the entrepreneurs that are the, 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 the real protagonists of this, of, of this journey that we're doing. Uh, but we want to, 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 to transmit at least uh, our, our approach uh, or, or our vision about this. And we're in a very, very particular times today, you know, because of this, of this pandemic. And a lot of people, a lot of people uh, predict this pandemic, but the world in general didn't, didn't listen. And now everybody are listening about what, what, is, what is going on. So everybody are aware of, of what is going on today. You know? uh, but we're facing another, crisis uh, in the horizon or another like pandemias in the horizon, like climate change, like everybody knows. We are also 
facing a sister on production. Uh, we can uh, food that we are going to need. In the... So I was talking about the, 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 the potential crisis that we are facing about agriculture and, and cattle, how we produce meat today. We are also facing, Rick is going to talk more about this, a uh, potential crisis about uh, how we uh, do ingredients for, for the food industry, how we, how we process uh, food in the, in the food industry. Uh, this is a good example of what we are eating, what, what our kids are eating, and, and we need to change uh, that. And also in health, uh, as, as we know, we are, we are now facing this, this virus crisis, but we are, we are ahead, uh, uh, super resistance box, uh, crisis that uh, we, 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 can, we, we, can, we can be dealing in the, in, in the couple of years. And also in the rich countries, we have huge problem with diabetes or obesity that it's a, it's a, a very weird problem because uh, we, it's not a problem of how much food we have, if not, how is the quality of that food. And on the other hand, uh, the medicine improved a lot in the last years, but it didn't improve at the same level in the poor countries. So we have, uh, we, we have full of, of, of potential crisis also in this kind of, of, of illness that is only uh, for the poor, like dengue or, um, or Ebola or different, uh, di dif different illness that, that can be very dangerous only in the, in the poor countries. So we have great challenges about that. Um, we have an answer for that. Uh, we think, we believe, really believe in that uh, uh, one answer to, to all these potential crises is science. We, we truly believe in the power of knowledge and the power of knowledge put it in action to, to solve this great challenge that we are facing. And we think that science can do it alone. And we think that we have to work together uh, with business and, and business people together with the scientists. Are, it's difficult, or there are different languages, yes, different approaches of, of, of the problems also, uh, but we have to figure out how we can work together. And, and, and one clue that we have about this combination of business and science for us are startups. We think that startups are the right uh, vehicle to work together with the business side and the scientific side. So, uh, because of the, the nature of the startups, how they work, how they, how they can face the challenges, how they can face a uh, change and, and pivoting uh, the, the, the different, different uh, business model that, that need to, 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 to change in, in the path of, of growing. So we are working in that. <clears throat> and in specifically in science, we are talking about biotechnology. And and biotechnology, uh, we, we are looking at it as, as a technology itself. We think that biology is a technology itself, you know, that we can, uh, we can approach the biology as a technology. But in general, in, in the business side mostly, when you talk about uh, biotechnology, you maybe think about the pharmaceutical industry, you know, the, the new molecules for, for, for cancer or for Alzheimer, uh, the, those like more critical illness that we, we have in the world. But biotechnology is not only about that. We have this convergence of, of technology that is biology, that is hardware, that is software, that are giving a lot of tools to solve great problems in different industries as agriculture, as food, as energy, as diagnostics, uh, as uh, several industries, materials, consumer products, a lot of, a lot of products that we can we can solve with biotechnology in a new generation of, of, of startups. And there's a, a bunch of examples of, of these new startups that are really, really uh, revolutionizing the, 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 the industry. New, new diagnostics, as I mentioned, the, 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 the revolution of, of plant-based uh, new, new, new products like Beyond Burger or Impossible Burger or a lot of of, of substitutes of uh, animal-based products to plant-based products like dairies or like mayo, mayonnaise, uh, <clears throat> like ice creams. A lot of products are, are changing the way of, of, of how, how they, they, they work. Also in agriculture, 
uh, companies that uh, like appeal science like this that you can see the strawberries that was treated with or organic compounds that you know, or, or, or biological compounds that can treat the biology the, 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 the strawberries in a post post harvest uh, and and you see the difference uh, of, of one without the, that treatment you also have substitutes in ingredients today Rick is going to tell more about this uh, but uh, this this is a company uh, that are making egg whites without the eggs. You can do that with with different combination of yeast. You can do this this kind of of, of egg whites. Egg whites. Also, new factories that are developing new microorganisms uh, tailor made to produce different stuff like uh, Ginkgo Bioworks or Zymergen or Sintego that are producing in scale different uh, uh, RNA or DNA synthesis for different application. Or this picture about this organ on a chip uh, that you can put the functionality of an organ in a chip and test different, different drugs and, uh, and, and so on. And a revolution in, in biomaterials. This last picture is a, a, a picture of leather made from fungi. So uh, we are making uh, the, 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 the co this, this, this company that's called Microworks uh, are making leather from, from, from fungi. And, and there's a lot of biomaterials uh, alternatives that are making from, from different microorganisms. So, <clears throat> but what happened? What, what we can go faster because we daily are facing this, this, this problem. It's hard to take sign out, out of the, out of the, out of the, of the lab. It's not a lack of knowledge to solve this problem. Uh, it's not a lack of attitude from scientists to solve this problem, uh, but it's, it's a lack of uh, the, the way how, how we take out the science out of the lab to put it in the, in the, in the, in the productive sector. You know? So we're working in that. And first, for for face this to approach this, we build a, a very a very great team, balance in science and, and business. Uh, Federico and I uh, had more than, than 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 15 years of experience in in, in companies related to science or, or technology. Maria and Romina are the, the, the scientists in the in the group. Uh, so we are working with them uh, very very tight. And, and we are <clears throat> working in how to translate these this, this projects that are coming from the science fields into potential startups. Uh, also, we are working with, uh, uh, with a, a back office a group that is led by, by Eugenia that, that help us daily to, 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 to deal with all that, that stuff. And with this, with this team, we, we um, uh, develop a, a, a company builder model to put together science, capital, and entrepreneurs. Uh, we saw that this need to, to be to to be do it to put in Latin America new startups in the in the path. And we do it in three steps. You know, we first explore all the uh, the scientific system, looking for the great scientists that want to become entrepreneurs. Uh, we also explore the uh, entrepreneurial ecosystem where we select uh, great entrepreneurs that want to go through this crazy world of doing uh, uh, science-based startups. And we put them together in a, a three-month program that is called Ignite. Uh, every year, we select 20 of those uh, uh, projects and, and entrepreneurs, and we work with them to match them and to uh, create this, this new amazing companies. So if magic happens and we can do uh, this match and, and the team is already set, set it, uh, we invest in them up to $200,000 and then we go with them uh, to, to the world. We help them to go to San Francisco, to Europe. Uh, we have contacts also in Israel and, and we are doing some new contacts in Asia. Um, so, so we help them to go to the next step of, of, of fundraising and also the next step of commercialization, uh, connecting with big companies uh, all around the world. 
and we also can invest in that process after if they receive new investment. And we are doing this from Latin America. I already mentioned we have a huge opportunity here uh, that to create this kind of startups to the world. We are not looking uh, only the Latin American market. We are looking for startups that are developing new technologies to the world. We, we, we know that we can be competitive in the world. And we have a lot of scientists that can do that work, very competitive scientists in, in the region. Uh, we have a infrastructure for do that for lab and for scaling. There is a, a small industry, but an uh, industry as well of biotechnology. And there is an opportunity of arbitrage in terms of, of, of cost, because today to, to do R&D in Latin America is uh, like one fifth of the cost that you can do it in the, in the coast in, in the US or in Europe as well. You know? And uh, last but no less important, we have in the region a huge biodiversity. Biodiversity is a great source of information to develop this all great uh, products that we can develop with biotechnology. Maybe Franco can tell something about how important is biodiversity today to, to have information about how bi uh, uh, nature works and how we can use that information to develop, to engineer that, that information that nature provides us. No? <clears throat> so with this, we developed our first fund three years ago with very important investors in Argentina, uh, mainly. Uh, there are also companies that are, that, that are working uh, with uh, biotechnology in very, in, in very sophisticated stuff like uh, monoclonal antibodies, like uh, new, new seeds, uh, like uh, biofuels, uh, like vaccines that are very uh, important developments and productions here in, in Argentina from Latin America. Today we have a portfolio of 21 uh, startups. You know, in three years we um, Develop this this portfolio. Uh, Thirty scientists and fifteen business profiles are, are are teaming up, and now the founders of these companies. Ten uh, of those startups are were funded uh, by by women. We already committed eight million dollars from 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 our fund, and today are working uh, one hundred and fifty people, and we are like testing this model uh, with this amazing startups that for us is a very, a very, a, a, a big pride because uh, people from around the world are, are, are uh, trusting them. They are investing in them. They are selecting them from acceleration programs around the world in, in, in the US, in China, in Ireland, in Peru, in, in Australia, and, 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 and moving to, to to, to look for more investors all around the world. And, and we are just starting in, the, in that. So what we are to finish, what we are uh, looking for the future, we think that we can expand our impact uh, to other region. We see that this problem of how to put together science with entrepreneurs and how, uh, to, how, how we can create uh, these amazing startups can happen. It's a, 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 a huge necessity in the, in the region. So we think that we, we, we can do it in the region. So we are planning in the, in the next year, uh, at the end of the year, start a new process of fundraising to, 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 to expand our impact in the region. Uh, we already map it in Argentina and a little bit in Uruguay, more than 1,000 projects. We think that that same amount of, uh, if we translate that, that amount of projects, we think that there is at least 15, uh, thousand projects in, in Latin America and South America. And we think that from that critic mass, we can build and invest in at least 150 new biotech startups in the next year, eight years. So thanks a lot. I think uh, the best example is to, to, to you to know the, some startups that we are working with and uh, very good examples of, of, of our model uh, and how they're working. And the, the potential of this is, is, is Ricky and, and Franco. So I think it's, it's a turn for, for Ricky to talk. Thank you, Matias. Uh, Ricky, you have the floor. Wonderful. Let me try to share my screen.
Okay, can, can you see it? Wonderful. Well, hi everyone. My name is Ricky and I'm the CEO and co-founder of Microma. First of all, I would like to thank the Argentinian Embassy in the UK to connect our UK and Gridex for organizing this great event and invited us to tell you what we do at Microma. Uh, in this presentation, we are going to introduce you for the first time to general public to our complete platform technology. So we are really excited. Census. Census are the way we connect with the world. Our ancestors use them as survival tools. For example, not to eat poison food. Nowadays, companies add colorants, flavors, and fragrances to make their products more attractive and incentivize us to buy them. From junk food like snacks, soda, candies, to healthy food like baggy bacon, pickles, jelly, and yogurt. And not only food, but also cosmetics, household products, and perfumes use these additives. But what most people don't know is that many of these additives come from petroleum. They are not only bad for the environment, but also they have been related to many health concerns, ranging from allergies to hyperactivity, ADHD, and even cancer. We are literally eating petroleum. And yes, we can produce natural, natural and healthier colorants, flavors, and fragrances, but they are much more expensive and they come from traditional agriculture that is far from being the perfect replacement. My father is an agriculture engineer, and since I was a kid, I understood the many challenges agriculture has. Farmers have to cope with climate change, soil erosion, and biodiversity loss. Every day, there are new diseases that affect plants and have to use more agrochemicals to maintain the performance. Besides that, a lot of water is used. 70% of the world's fresh water is used for agriculture, and only 12% of the world's land can be used for farming. If we need to scale up the production, we need more land and more water. That means deforestation and even more water scarcity. How are we going to feed 10 billion people without damaging our planet? It's hard to think we are going to do it with traditional agriculture. Thinking about all these challenges, we created Microma, a biotech platform to produce natural ingredients in a sustainable, cost-effective, and scalable way. We base our technology on three key elements. Nature's most powerful bi biotransformation machine, fungi. Fungi are really cool. They use low-cost low feedstocks. They don't need light to grow, and they are very versatile allowing us to grow them using a continuous fermentation process. And we believe the future of agriculture, ingredients, and nutrition is going to happen inside bioreactors. That's why it's another key part of our platform. And last but not least, the latest editing, editing technology that I'm sure Frank is going to tell you more about it, CRISPR, which allow us to enhance nature's power. So, we carefully select grass filamentous fungi, we edit the strains to increase the productivity and functionality, and then we grow them in scalable bioreactors, producing colors, protein, fragrances, and flavors. We use submerged fermentation to grow our fungi, as you can see in the video. This type of fermentation is really scalable. We can use two liter or 50,000 liters bioreactors, which are widely used in the industry nowadays. We have a consistent product quality because we can reproduce the exact conditions in every batch. And also, fungus great potential allow us to develop a continuous fermentation process, which means lower costs. This revolutionary way of producing ingredients translates into a shorter supply chain for example, no more sourcing of roses from Turkey or patchoulol from Indonesia to produce perfumes. A complete traceability and control over production because production is going to be in-house. No seasonality, producing all year long, all day long. 
and no diseases or plagues. So we are not using agrochemicals anymore. All these advantages mean economic benefits, but that's not it. We are also helping the planet. By replacing traditional agriculture, responsible sourcing is not the problem anymore. We reduce water consumption <clears throat> and also a smaller carbon footprint. The total addressable market for our platform is huge. It's around $100 billion and it's still growing for some industry like the food industry, cosmetic, pharma, and etc. Our two first products are colors and proteins. Here you can see the colors we are currently producing. They have a better performance than natural dyes currently used in the food industry, better pH and thermostability, high solubility and antioxidant properties. We want to develop <clears throat> a full spectrum of colors. So on our pipeline are also blue, green, violet and black. And this is the fungal biomass, just as we get it out of our process. Some of its great properties are that it is rich in protein and fiber, contains all essential amino acids, a good flavor profile, and a lot of color. It can be used as alternative protein in plant-based meat, processed meat, and also as a colorant ingredient in fish feed. Since we created the company in September last year, many of the top and fastest growing companies have shown interest in Microma. We received five LOIs from huge companies like Danone and multiple MTAs from the biggest players in the food, beverages, confectionery, and cosmetic industry. And we are really excited to tell you, like I said in the beginning, this is the first time we are, we are telling to general public what's next for us. We are leveraging the technology we created for our color and protein uh, to produce flavors and fragrances, opening up a $30 billion, uh, $30 billion market. Uh, some of the biggest companies in the sector have already shown interest in these products too. And this, this is the best part, our great and diverse team, Mauricio, CSO and co-founder, he is a biotechnologist, PhD in biological sciences, expert in scaling up bioprocesses. Mariano, our food scientist, R&D in feed and food applications and industrial production. Emilia, our biotechnologist, she's experienced in microbial fermentation. And Emiliano, molecular biologist, our CRISPR expert. On my side, I have a business degree with experience in strategic consultancy, and I'm a professor of operations. We are honored to be advised by a group of highly experienced professionals too, in every key part of our business and science. And also we have a great network of support. In the bio, the largest life sciences accelerator in the world, MISTA, the best place to optimize food, both located in San Francisco and GridX. I, I don't have to explain much, but I can say that what they do is really cool. And related to this uh, idea of connecting uh, the world with Argentina, uh, I'd like to tell you that we are located in Rosario, Argentina, and also in San Francisco to get the best of, of out, uh, to get the best of both worlds. The business part of our company is located in San Francisco because it's the best place for, start, for startups, obviously. To build a relationship with investors and the most disruptive companies in the world. And the USA is the biggest market for our platforms besides Europe. The science part of, our, the, of Microma is located in Rosario for several reasons. It's the third biggest city of our country. It has a great scientific community the oldest biotech university in the country. The time zone is pretty good to set up meetings with Euro and USA and an extremely low cost of living. Rent, for example, is 95% cheaper than San Francisco and 92% cheaper than London. We can develop much more technology with the same amount of investment, like Matthias said before. At Microma, we are leading the way to a bright future full of color, flavors, and fragrances. Please reach to us if you want to know more about our science, our fundraising, and let us know if we can collaborate in any way. Thank you very much for 
your attention. Thank you very much, Ricky. Please, I, uh, I invite you to submit your questions through the chat mode and we'll, we'll get to the, um, to the questions at, at the end. Uh, Franco, the floor is yours. Sure, thank you for, for the introduction. Um, I'm gonna try to share my screen. So, there we are. Okay, thank you for, for the time. My name is Franco Oitia. I'm co-founder and CEO of Casper Biotech. And we're building a molecular diagnostics platform powered by CRISPR. I'm currently focused on taking to market very soon uh, our COVID-19 uh, diagnostics kit. Molecular diagnostics today um, is mostly limited to centralized labs. Um, that has a, a problem in terms of the time that it takes from the moment a patient is taken the sample to the time it gets uh, his results, uh, requiring both trained personnel and expensive equipment. So it's, a, it's basically a process that takes days. What we're doing at Casper is shifting that from the centralized lab to the field. And by the field, we mean giving access to this information to both the professional and the patient in a timely manner, in a, couple, in a, in a matter of minutes instead of days. Um, and we do this through CRISPR. So uh, CRISPR is, is a great biotechnology tool. Uh, Ricky has shown it in terms of its applications as a gene editing, uh, as a gene editing tool uh, for its capacity to specifically identify uh, DNA or RNA sequences and modify it. Um, and that not only has applications in food uh, and in animals, but, but also uh, as a therapeutic tool. Uh, and a lot of companies have emerged in that field. Uh, at Casper, we're using CRISPR for something different. In, in, instead of using CRISPR to edit, we use CRISPR to identify specific DNA or RNA sequences that belong to infectious diseases, pathogens, or any kind of DNA or RNA-based target that, that we want to detect. Um, and the CRISPR enzyme or the CRISPR system, if it finds that target within the sample, it will generate us a, a reporting. It will give us an indication that it has found that. Um, and we do this through our own CRISPR-Cas enzyme. So CRISPR, its backstory is that it comes from nature. It's the defense mechanism that bacteria and archaea have against viruses. And what we've done at Casper is we've gone to nature itself to look for novel and enhanced CRISPR systems. And those systems are the platform in which we develop our molecular diagnostic solutions. So from extreme environments from South America, we've collected these new CRISPR systems. Uh, we've patented them. We've prove their differential functionality. And those are the systems that bring our molecular diagnostics platform to, to, to creation. Uh, our molecular diagnostics platform enables us to detect for viruses, bacteria, genetic mutations, and even GMO, um, processing from different can, kinds of samples, such as blood, saliva, swab, plant tissue, and, and even materials. So this is a platform that obviously has great applications within diagnostics for healthcare, but also within other industries, such as agriculture, farming, in which timely detection at point of care or in the field is a great need. Um, and through this is that we're developing different kinds of products that integrate CRISPR and our Cas enzyme. The first, the one that you see on the left is our CRISPR test kit. Uh, which then I will do a double click on that so as to show our, our exact traction and, and how we're taking this to market for COVID-19, um, which enables a high throughput solution, which doesn't require detection through a centralized lab, but rather shifts that to hospitals, clinics, and low complexity facilities. And the Phantom point of care platform also integrates our CRISPR-Cas system, but does that in a truly decentralized manner in the sense that this could put molecular diagnostics even in the hands of someone in their own house uh, or, or in very low complexity settings. Um, so with regards to the CRISPR uh, Casper kit, um, this is a kit that provides sample 
two result information for, for detection, in this case for COVID-19, for SARS-CoV-2, in less than 45 minutes, without requiring any extraction RNA process. And extraction RNA of RNA today is a huge bottleneck. So, so this is a, a great differential value, not only in terms of avoiding that step, but rather for the length of the process in total of being just 45 minutes. The ease of use in the sense that you, we don't require expensive equipment such as a qPCR, but you are, are able to do a detection in a simplified format as a lateral flow strip, which is truly disposable. And these two properties combined with the fact that our detection and our limit of detection is comparable to what today is the standard in centralized labs with the qPCR. So same kind of performance, but much greater accessibility in terms of its portability and its term, in terms of its cost. Um, and for the case of COVID-19, which is the current focus of the company of what we're taking to market, which we're very soon, uh, and then I'll share a little bit more of information about our current traction for that. Um, we've already done validations with clinical samples in collaborations with hospitals and health ministry of, of Argentina. Uh, in which we processed for 36 samples of extracted RNA of patients with 100% sensitivity and specificity out of the 11 positives and 25 negatives. And as of today, we've done further clinical validations uh, out of 32 patient samples, also showing that same performance of 100% sensitivity and specificity, which is very encouraging. Um, and doing the readout both in terms of fluorescence plate reader as well as in the lateral flow portable format. Um, the items that are needed for our kit to, to be performed uh, are very basic. Uh, this is tips, tubes, a micro pipette, and a heat block. So these are components that cost less than $400 and are very scalable. So the CapEx deployment for hospitals, for clinics, even for pharmacies that may want to deploy this is very low and it's truly scalable. The traction and the interest that our kit has generated so far uh, has been shown in, in terms of the different early access partnerships that, that we've striked or, or, or we're doing with reference medical institutions, both in the private and public sector, such as the Health Ministry of Canada, What's Worth Laboratory in New York State, DASA, which is the biggest laboratory network in South America, and Albert Einstein Hospital in Brazil being one of the leading hospitals in, in, in the region. Um, and we've received more than 300 prospective uh, requests of distributors, hospitals, and, and other kinds of, of possible clients, not only in the Americas, but also in Europe, Asia, Africa, and, and beyond. So that is the, the, the functionality and the value of our kit, but also, it's good to, to, to state that we're very close to at scale production. So we have a contract manufacturing facility here in, in the US. Uh, we have our supply chain already set in place in which we can we produce our enzyme at scale and drop ship and supply from key uh, providers, the different components that are needed for our kit. Um, and this is the general status of our, our COVID-19 diagnostic solution and its deployment. We've already done the validations with patient samples. We have our supply chain in place. We're just days away from hopefully achieving our FDA EUA, which would be a huge milestone as, as that would be the authorization that enables us to commercialize our kit, not only in the US, but also to extend that author authorization to different countries around the world. Um, and from there, we would be scaling our, our production uh, on, on a month by month basis. Uh, to achieve our threshold of 2 million uh, monthly tests produced by September of this year. So an aggregate of 10 million tests produced in the second half of this year, um, being our first product to market. The rest of the time, these last moments, I, I wanted to take them to show a little bit of, of what's coming ahead for Casper and how we're integrating CRISPR not only into this kit, but also into the phantom point of care solution, which this is kind of a sneak peek. We, we haven't shown much about this, but this is our latest prototype of how we integrate CRISPR into microfluidics on paper technologies as the microcard that you see here in the right, 
uh, to enable a sample to result detection for uh, the different viruses that we want to detect, in this case for, for SARS-CoV-2. And this is powered by the Phantom device, which is a very practical and, and, and kind of reusable device, which has some basic heating components and costs us less than $50 to manufacture um, with a cartridge that would also be highly accessible in, in terms of its end consumer cost. Um, and, and in terms of the workflow, it's, the sim it's as simple as, as it gets. It's sample to lysis buffer, dilution of the lysis buffer into the microcard, activating the device and having a result within 45 to 60 minutes. Um, and, and this is a little bit of the value that this generates when compared to current existing systems, uh, such as qPCR automated systems and the, start, the standards within the industry. A little bit about the team. Um, we have grown from being five members throughout 2019 to now being a, a team of almost 24 people, um, including my three co-founders, Carla, Federico, and Lucia, which are experienced uh, in, in CRISPR, two of them being PhDs in, in, in that subject, um, and, and a growing team that has very strong people for each of the, the, the key positions, including people with expertise in synthetic uh, biology, microfluidics, biomedical engineering, and, and beyond. Um, so, so this is this is Casper. Um, the next weeks uh, and the second half of this year will be uh, a crucial time for for the company as as we're able to scale the production of of our kit and hopefully make that available to reach medical institutions all around the world. Um, and we're very interested in possible distributors, possible clients and partnerships on, on the medical side, as well as on the manufacturing side to, to enable our solution to be better deployed within Europe. Thank you, Franco. That was a great presentation. Uh, I think that there's some, some questions. Veronica, do you want to lead on those? Yes, well, we have a couple of questions. The first one is by Fabiana Ricaño. She's asking, uh, what is the range of the investment? I think that's a question for GridX. Yes, we, we invest uh, up to $200,000 per startup in our first stage. That is the, this company builder model. And after that, we can invest in the, the projects that already receive uh, investments. We have some amount of money to do follow-on investments. So we can also invest in, 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 that, in that stage too. Um, there is another question that's for uh, Juan Cruz, it's from, sorry, Juan Cruz Valdez. And the question is, how does the test cope with virus RNA mutations? I think this is for Casper Biotech. Yes, so we, when we design our, our assay, when we, when we design the target, uh, RNA or of our, our guide RNA of what we want to detect in the virus. We do that bioinformatically and align our guide RNA to the different mutations that could occur, uh, for example, for the SARS-CoV-2 virus. Uh, so we, we, we configured our assay for the detection of a conserved sequence, which is the least likely to mutate. So when mutations occur and for all the reported mutations that have been so far, um, our, our assay is 100% aligned with the conserved sequence and hence wouldn't suffer from not being able to detect that particular mutation or that particular sequence. Um, thank you. There's another question from uh, Martin Safarian and the question is, how is Casper going to compete with um, Sherlock Biosciences? Yes, yeah, so obviously there's other players within the, the CRISPR diagnostics field. There's the Sherlock Bioscience uh, company from a spin-off from uh, Broad Institute. There's also Mammoth Bioscience on, on the East Coast. And those are two companies that are obviously also leading the way uh, through this technology um, and are more advanced in, in the sense of their funding, um, having raised maybe hundreds of, of, of millions of dollars. We, we see that on, on the funding side, maybe the, the equation is imbalanced, but in terms of the concrete product that they've developed and what we're developing, uh, we see that our solution is more competitive or, or even 
leverage is more on the key value of, of what CRISPR is as, as a diagnostics tool, which is its accessibility. So Sherlock Bioscience has recently had their kit for COVID-19 approved by FDA, authorized in, in EUA. Um, and that for us was, was great news. First, because there was a, a risk of a new technology and, and its approval possibilities with FDA. So we already have a predecessor. Um, and also when seeing what is it that they had approved as their kit, um, when you compare the CASPER CRISPR kit for COVID-19 to what they've had approved, um, it's superior in, in some key traits, such as the possibility of doing a readout in a lateral flow, uh, the fact that our components come lyophilized while their reagents are on wet, and, and some other key variables. So there, it's good for, for the CRISPR space to, to advance and for different companies to, to be developing solutions uh, with this technology. Uh, and we see that within five uh, to six years, most of the molecular diagnostics market or a huge part of the molecular diagnostics market will shift towards CRISPR. Um, and, and there will be room for different companies applying different enzymes to different fields of application. We have a couple more minutes. If anyone wants to ask any questions, uh, please do write them, type them on the chat. Um, I have one question um, for any of the companies or maybe Matthias. It's um, because I know that when uh, when these companies are created uh, via the whole GreatX sort of experience, you are um, bridging the gap between the business entrepreneurs and the science entrepreneurs. What are the biggest difficulties that you find at the beginning? Or is it really easy to bridge the gap? How does it start working when you have to, or is it you both speak different languages and how does that work? Yes, the the the, the the biggest challenge is a cultural challenge. There are very different cultures. Uh, I mentioned something about how a business guide oriented uh, approach a problem is totally different on how a scientist uh, are approaching maybe the same problem. So that's put them in very different, different paths of of, of, of a vision of, of, of the world, no, even. But fortunately, we, there is, a, there is a, common, a common place. There is a, 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 a common issue that uh, these uh, so strange profiles uh, share, that is the impact. Mm -hmm. uh, young entrepreneurs are totally driven by uh, making this kind of companies uh, that can really change uh, stuff in the world that can really bring solutions to these huge problems that we mentioned before. And scientists, the same. The scientists want to uh, impact in the world through their knowledge. It's like, uh, it's almost uh, something like natural in, in how they think in how they choose these careers. Uh, they really want to uh, apply knowledge to, to solve real problems. Uh, so that's the, the, the common place where, they, where we can work together with them. Okay, we, we have the same goal, but we have different languages. We have to figure out how to, and, and, and I think the, 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 uh, Ricky and Franco can, can tell more about they are the, the, the business uh, side both. Um, but I think that uh, sometimes it could be difficult, as, 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 is, as is always in a startup. Uh, but when you have this promise of impact, this promise of changing something, I think the, 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 the difficulties align into to something common and they can figure out how to, how, to, how to go ahead with that. Thank you very much. Um, I don't think there are any more questions, so maybe, well, we, we're just, um, just on time, we're finishing just in time. Um, Valeria, I don't know if you want to wrap up. Um, uh, well, I, I just wanted to thank all our, all our speakers uh, for, their, for their fabulous presentations, it's quite, quite interesting. And uh, uh, also all of those persons that, that joined us today, and to, um, you know, to, if, if, if you want to be, um, uh, included in future webinars uh, to contact Veronica. Veronica, can you put your details on? Uh, yes, I just read it on the website. 
as well as um, that can we get also provide the details of the speakers because I think that would be very important. Um, yes. Um, Matthias, you want us to share your details perhaps or? Uh, I think your I think your details went on wrong. Um, oh sorry, yes, it was wrong. Yes. There we go. <laughs> yes, sorry, thank you. <laughs> so we well there's the, the email from Matthias and from myself and if anyone writes me I can I can pass over the details to any of the companies as well. We can we can share the information. Right, so so there are, there are great opportunities. It, it always makes me feel um, particularly happy when I see all this, all this progress and all these things that are, are that are happening with John, you know, with, from Argentinian bright minds, and how uh, with less costs and uh, but ingenuity and 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 great professional backgrounds, you're able to accomplish um, great things such as you know Ricky with the microma and and with this uh, COVID testing kit. Um, to come up with these with these specific projects in a short time span uh, to cover existing needs in the world it, it's something that always makes me very proud so thank you very much all of you for for your presentations and and, and for the work you do